طيب بسم الله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد <coughs> We continue in the explanation of the Himawiyya by the great Imam Taqi al-Din Ahmad ibn Abdul Halim ibn Abdul Salam ibn Taymiyyah al-Harrani al-Dimishqi rahimahullah who died 728 after the migration of our Prophet alayhi salatu al-salam but the time now is 7.50 p.m. 7.50 p.m. Thursday, February the 17th, 2022 of the Gregorian calendar with Greece with the correct calendar correct calendar, which is the Islamic calendar, but technically it's the night of Jumu'ah. It is the night of Jumu'ah, the 17th of the month of, of Rajab, the year 1443, after the migration of our Prophet <clears throat> We were discussing the affair with the great Imam, if he was saying about those who the proofs are established against from those who start arguments for establishing the affairs against those people, meaning the people that are affected by the outside influences of this world, meaning those evils connected with philosophy and logic and giving precedence to the, the human mind and intellect over what Allah revealed of revelation. For those who come with those arguments, those so-called so uh, rationality of the intellect and of the human mind, you'll find the Shaykh of Islam said that those who come with these arguments of what we establish the proof against, he said, so these people who the arguments and proofs have been established against, he said the same proofs that we use for these people is the same thing we utilize for the other. He says and that is from numerous aspects. So this is what we mentioned last class. You'll find that he said, أَحْلُهَا بَيَانُ أَنَّ الْعَقَلْ لَا يُحِيلُ ذَلِكَ He says your clarification that the mind does not allow that. Meaning, does not allow the acceptance of revelation. Whereas if it's given, if it's given this type of power or dictation over the revelation, then it will not accept of what came through it, of or by way of the Kitab and Sunnah. Meaning that the Kitab and Sunnah is weighed upon the human mind, which is incorrect. He said that the the aqal la yuhilu dalik. It's a clarification that the, the mind or the intellect does not allow that. Doesn't allow that you heal that. Athani and the Nusus and Wari that tell that Tahtabir Tedwil. We clarify also that the text that also been narrated from the Book of Allah, also in the authentic Sunnah. Those affairs connected with the names and attributes of Allah to be with that we clarify to them that it does not accept nor does it necessitate false interpretations or perverted meanings or false notions whereas we twist the meaning of those names and attributes of Allah by saying his hand is like his two bounties or his power to the end of the distortions that they bring. But Shaykh al-Islam is saying this is the way that you have to what? This is, half, this is the way of how you properly establish the proofs and arguments against these type of people that have been affected by these type of ideologies in this man by saying, clarifying, first, number one, that the human mind does not accept that, meaning a revelation. And what do we say it? Meaning that it makes the human mind the foundation and that the revelation coincides or that revelation is like the icing on the cake. Which is, which is absolute nonsense. Rather, the, the revelation is the foundation. And the human mind brings the ice in, if you want to say for lack of better words. 
Then he says that the second, أَنَّ النُّسُوسِ الْوَالِدَةَ لَا تَحْتِمِلُ التَّوِيلِ That all these texts does not necessitate distorted meanings. He said that's the second thing that we have to clarify. The third is where we stopped at last class. He said that the majority of these affairs, أَنَّ عَامَّةَ هَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ قَدْ عُلِمَا أَنَّهُ الرَّسُولِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ جَاءَ بِهَا بِالْإِطْرَارِ كَمَا عُلِمَا أَنَّهُ جَاءَ بِالصَّرَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ He said that the majority of these affairs indeed in which was established and known as knowledge, that's acceptable, meaning that the Muslims, before all this nonsense occurred of confusion, of what the people were trying to introduce to the Muslims of logic and rhetoric and so-called philosophical uh, terms and affairs that's connected with it, before all this, the Messenger of Allah came with texts and the Muslims accepted it without any what? Hesitation. They, for example, they heard that Allah ex mentioned in his book, he ascended above the Aush, no problem. He said the, the doubts didn't come until they came with this nonsense. He said, for verily all these affairs, and the most important of all of them, is affairs connected with Allah Himself. That before Nashatul Ilm al kalam before the coming of rhetoric and logic and philosophy and anything connected with it, he said it was established and known as accepted knowledge by extreme dire necessity. That what the Messenger came with was what? Clear. And the Muslims accepted it. He said, just as it was known and knowledge in, of what the messenger came with, of what? The five prayers. Of when it was established, the time to pray, and how to pray. Nobody argued with those matters. The Muslims didn't discuss whether it's two rakat for fajr. No, 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 no. My mind necessitates that it's hot, so, and I'm tired, and I'm exhausted. So why, to me, I should just pray one for fajr? Because my intellect necessitates that that I'm tired and I need to get some sleep. So my mind says that what's acceptable is what? One rakah. One rakah for fajr. And they can just go on and argue and say to you, oh, the scholar is different. What kind of nonsense is this? And you'll find that the Muslims do say this nonsense these days. And these are the type of arguments you need to say to them. Do you have any doubt of how? Many rakaat you pray for each prayer. Someone right now pray one rakaat for fajr and pray this silently. Without recitement in a boisterous manner, you would deem them to be what? Crazy. You wouldn't accept it. Due to the fact that you what? You accepted the text wholeheartedly. And you knew that what poses it what? Has to be rejected. That's the reason why you display this open opposition, right? He said, for those affairs you, you deem is such as the of what the Muslims accepted as extreme dire necessity of what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi came was accepted wholeheartedly. In those affairs which are the most important, which is pertaining to Allah's names and attributes, you'll find that indeed how the Muslims were upon that surety as far as in regards to their prayers was the same thing. And how to fast the month of Ramadan, and when to fast the month of Ramadan, and Hajj and the likes, you'll find that they never came with any false interpretations in regards to trying to distort how the prayer is done or what time is prayed or the month of Ramadan, how a person fasts and when the time it is to fast and the month it is to fast. All those affairs are knowledge what they call ilm al-daruri, meaning knowledge of extreme diet, extreme necessity of the Muslims, what? Embracing it and working by it. And then he talked about the affairs of the Qalam al that we mentioned last class, because I don't want to get into it because we discussed this yesterday, because we want to move forward. We discussed about the Qalam al and we said that the origin of the nation of Islam was extracted from them. The origin came from the Qalam al which was a group of the Baltinian, as we said last class. Because if you look to everything that the nation of Islam does, they distort the, the verses in the Book of Allah, they distort how to perform the prayer, they distort the month of Ramadan, to the end of the nonsense. He says, Ar-Rabi', let's continue. Ar-Rabi', 
that the fourth thing that we have to establish is proof. And you bay in and al-Atr al-Salih, you wafiq ma jad bin nusus. When kana fin nusus bin al-Tafsil, ma yajiz al-Atlu an darki tafsile, or darki tafsile, afwa. Wa inna ma aqalahu mujmalan ila ghayi dharika min al-wujuh. علم أن الأساطين من هؤلاء والفحول معترفون بأن العقل لا سبيل له إلى اليقين في عامة المطالب الإلهية الله أكبر. So the fourth thing that it has to be clarified: the untampered with mind and intellect, meaning the intellect that remained upon its natural disposition of submitting to the revelation. That's the type of mind he's talking about. He said العقل السريح. That the, the natural human mind that wasn't affected agrees with the character, agrees with the revelation. It came to submit to it, not to oppose it. He said, when Caliph in Nusus made a tafsir, even though there might there will be in the text of details of what the aqal or what the human mind cannot what attain of its details. We're going to talk about that in a minute and explain it. For verily, it understands it in general. And other than that, from the different aspects, he said, "Ala an al asatim and haula wal fuhul mu'tarifun." He says, even though the heads of these people and their so-called prominent ones, they convinced that the mind, there's no way, there's no way for it to be utilized, or there's no way for one to attain surety in the affairs pertaining to the deity or the affairs of the matalab al ilahiyah. Meaning the affairs is connected with Allah to Ta'ala. What does he mean by that? All that we're going to explain right now. So that's where we stopped at. Last class. <clears throat> so you'll find, if you look at the text in your books, it says, أَنَّ عَامَةَ هَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ قَدْ عُلِمَا أَنَّ الرَّسُولِ جَاءَ بِهَا بِالْإِطْرَارِ Brothers, you got to focus these classes. you got to have all focus. He said that the majority of these affairs indeed is known as knowledge, or is accepted as knowledge. When Sheikh al Islam called it bil ittirar, meaning extreme necessity. Extreme necessity. What does he mean, extreme necessity? Meaning what necessitates destruction if one doesn't accept it. And he's talking about the knowledge of the Kitab and Sunnah. Everything that the Messenger came with is called il daruri. When we said, here in this context, he used the word ittirari. Ittirari here just means daruri. Daruri means something of extreme necessity. What necessitates that if one does not accept it or work by it, they'll be destroyed. They'll be destroyed. He said, bil ittirar bil ilm daruri, meaning the knowledge in which a, a person once they accept it, they cannot reject it. Or it necessitates, like we said, their destruction. That is what al ilm al daruri. He said, For verily, the natural disposition of the human beings was made in this manner, where when the revelation is conveyed, that the, the minds or the intellects, if they were not corrupted, were made to submit to the revelation when they hear it. Is it clear, everyone? He said that this is a fair which was accepted by the Ummah. Before all these outside influences came of corruption from the knowledge of rhetoric, philosophy, logic, or so-called using one's rationality and giving precedence to that over the revelation. He said before all this corrupt nonsense came, he said you'll find that the Muslims when they heard it, they accepted it. If they heard the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, there was no second guessing as far as was it one person that conveyed it, or was it 50? Because if it's one person then, that's suspect. We're not going to accept that. All these matters were, were came from the callings of the devils. And the callings of the devils in which they inspired through the people of logic and rhetoric and philosophy came with these so-called uh, ideologies in order to instill doubt in the Muslims concerning Allah. So they came with all these different types of Notions such as Allah is not above, or Allah, when He says ascension, it doesn't mean that, it means something else. All of those was the calling of the devil, in which Shaitan inspired his awliya, those who are close to him, from who carries his, his whispers, 
or carries his call, which is the denial that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have these names nor attributes. The call, this call to destruction, none of this appeared before or before the development of what we said of knowledge of rhetoric and philosophy, the Muslims accepted it. As soon as they heard that Allah has two hands, khalas, they didn't go beyond that. They did try to investigate it. How is it? Does it, does it look like the human being's hand? Once they heard it, they knew it meant hand, they stopped it. They didn't try to find the reality of it. Does it look like a human hand? How is it? Those matters you'll find that none of them did. They accepted it and stopped it and submitted to it. So then he went on to say, وَنَشْأَةُ الْعِلْمِ الْكَلَامَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ الْأَوَائِلْ قَابِلُوا تِلْكَ النُّصُوصِ He said they accepted these texts, they conveyed them, and they did not reject them. Nor did they try to refer it and offer it or, or expose it to the human mind. In order to say that, no, 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 for those affairs to be rejected, then we have to now refer it to the knowledge of rhetoric and see whether or not it's accepted in those arenas first. Which we know, which came as a result of it, when this type of knowledge developed, it corrupted the minds of the Muslims. Instead of so-called using rationality, it came with improper rationality, which corrupted their minds as a result, like we said, they fell into destruction. Then he goes on to say, as we mentioned and said, everyone, a person might say, well, what's an example of that? We'll say that in a minute. He says, just as it's a, a knowledge that all the Muslims accept right now, even from a lot of the deviant sects, from the Muslims, when they hear the, the text which comes in the book of Allah, the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, about the five prayers, they accept it wholeheartedly. None of them argue and say, no, we have to pray two prayers a day, three prayers a day, or five prayers, but they could be prayed in any, in the, in the, any given time we feel like it. Anyone from the Muslims who properly have knowledge know that's, that's not acceptable. Nor, as we mentioned a couple of minutes ago, that no Muslims out there who have truly studied and have submitted to the revelation argues and disputes concerning how many rakat we pray during the prayers? For, for example, as I said yesterday, in regards to praying four. Right now, someone in the message is saying, I don't have to pray four. I can pray two today because I, my mind, my intellect necessitates that, or my mind feels that it's, it's 90 degrees outside, and I just want to pray two today. I don't, well, if you was to tell a person to say, for example, well, that's not what Allah's message says. Well, the human mind takes precedence over what Allah's messenger said. My mind necessitates that. It's, it's hot outside. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel like praying for my guys. I want to pray too because it's hot outside. And I want to pray out loud. For those affairs, you'll find that if the Muslim came with this type of behavior, said this, this type of nonsense, the Muslims will reject it. Based upon what, everyone? What's the reason? Because they accepted the text which Allah sent down. And they know that what went against it is, is what everyone? It's rejected. So this is what Shaykh Islam is using as an argument. You saying to the person that's been affected by rhetoric, or affected, affected by logic, or affected by so-called rationality. You ask them, why don't you say, well, my human mind dictates this. Why am I going to pray Fajr 1 or a instead of 2? Ask them, what's the reason? You would say, they would naturally say, because Allah and His Messenger said in the Kitab and Sunnah that we have to pray in this manner. That's what you, you hold on to that, say, okay, hold on to that. So why don't you say here, oh, the Ulama scholars differ? And you know that's rejected. You know here to say that fasting other than the month of Ramadan. Right now, for Muslims to come and say, let's fast in the month of Shaban. What, what Muslim out, and, and, then they, and they say to you, for example, oh, the scholars differ. What would you say? You would say, no, 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 that's rejected, differing. Why? Because Allah and His Messenger says such and such. And we give precedence to that over what anyone says. No matter who it is. That's what Shaykh Islam is trying to teach the people here. He's trying to say, these are the affairs of the other pillars of the religion. At the head of all of those pillars is the affairs connected with the belief in Allah. They are the most greatest of all affairs. 
And those matters, just as you say about the prayer and about the Ramadan and Hajj and how to perform it, you have to say that about what is the most head of all those matters, which is the matters concerning Allah Taala and His names and His attributes, which is the greatest of all of those pillars of Islam. So Shaykh Al-Islam is saying, you see the contradictions of people these days, of how they so-called follow the rules in certain regards, but in the most vital of all of the affairs, they go against it. So that's what he's trying to establish here. He said, for verily you'll find that we mentioned that the Tatwil, when the false notions appear, he said, you'll find how the Muslims started to now deviate in these regards. He said to the point where you'll find Muslims that actually do so-called switch the meaning of prayer, switch the meaning of Ramadan. For example, the deviant sect from the Balkani Yun, as we discussed yesterday. The Balkani Yun, from their audacity, is that they twist the meaning of the word Hajj. You know what the meaning of Hajj is? He said to visit the graves. To visit the graves of the, of the dead, from the awliya, and their so-called heads, of those who's beloved to them. He says, so Hajj to them doesn't mean going to Mecca, performing the sacred, or performing to go to the sacred house, to perform those, those rituals, and those rites for Allah Taala during the month of Hajj. He says, he said, this is to let you know the dangers of Tatwil. The meaning of Tatwil here is distorting the text, distorting its meaning, warping the text, warping it and coming with a perverted meaning in order to mislead the people. He said, you see what happened when we opened this door, how it led to other deviant sects with the most filthiest of what? Of ideologies and beliefs in regards to the understanding of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah and the Message of Allah. He said to the point when they look, see the word Hajj, the meaning of it to them is to visit the house of the dead or to visit the graveyards of the dead. He says in regards to prayer, he said prayer means to make dua to them. <laughs> prayer means to make dua to the dead or to the so-called awliya. And he said and fasting means just to hide their secrets in which they distorted all of the affairs of worship. So everything was directed to their so-called mashayikh, their so-called scholars, or beloved scholars. So you see how he said, you see the door of Tatwil, when it was open to the Muslims, how the circle became bigger and bigger and bigger, until each different sect had what they had of those corrupt ideologies, until they were able to come to the Book of Allah and just play around with it. And they were able to come to the Sunnah Messenger of Allah and play around with it due to the fact that they followed the banner or under the guise of what they call tetwil. Tetwil meaning here, distorting the meaning or distorting the text of what comes in the Book of Allah or the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and coming with a meaning that is in contradiction to how Allah wanted it to be understood and in, in what it's intended for. And going in contradiction to what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu how he wanted it to be understood and what was intended. Is it clear everyone? So that's the reason why you ain't even found that Allah the Ulama mentioned the affair of Tatwil, how dangerous it is, and how this door, when it was left it open to the Ummah, how the deviant sects took advantage of it, so everyone could come with something that suits their own desires. And at the same time, misleading the Muslims until they answered their call, until the, this affair became from the call to the hellfire, based upon these warped understandings. And this is what Shaykh al Islam is saying here. How the affairs become extremely dangerous, and you show how these affairs contradict one another. Because any Muslim right now was to hear that prayer does not mean other than five times a day, rather, it means to make dua to the dead. A person with thick in their mind, this individual has totally lost their mind. And if you do look to those who fell into this, the greatest of them is the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam says, La ilaha illallah. And what it means, their meaning of it is that what? Farah Muhammad was Allah. Farah Muhammad was Allah in the form of a human being. He was in the form of a man, which the ideologies of that goes back to the deviant sects of the Baltaniya. From them is the deviant sect called the Qalamita. Where Hamdan Kirmit was deemed as Allah. Or Allah came in the form of a man. Those affairs we discussed last class, I want to reiterate because we got we want to move. Why? 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 Why?
He said the affairs of the people who's considered Baltiniya or Baltiniyun, he said they're present today. He said you'll find from amongst them who are called Al Ismailiya. Al Ismailiya is from these people, from the people of the Baltiniya. He says that they're in different lands, in different what? Different ways or different lands. He says, now listen to this part. He says, when nas the people that's upon this ideology is what they call Baltiniya. He said, the people of the Muslims know what's considered Masajid. The people who's upon Baltiniya, he says, they have Ma'abid, not Masajid. He said, Ma'abid, places of worship that resembles Masajid, but they're not Masajid. He said, those people that are upon the affairs of Baltiniya don't enter the Masajid of the Muslims. He says, just as the Muslims don't enter their ma'abid, their places of worship. He said, however, regretfully we say, if you go now to now to the lands of some of the, the, the Arab countries or the Islamic Arab countries, he said that they have now came to sneak in. When they enter the message of the Muslims and they play around and make mockery of their aqidah where they do not perceive. He says that those who get affected is the suddhaj, meaning those who are have been affected. Sadaja is like, uh, what is a person known? The Sudaj. Naive. That's what I was looking for. He said the people that usually get affected is those who are naive. Like they, they have some, they're naive. Like they might say, oh, they're just, you know, they, they're this king. We don't know what they're on. Not realizing that these people are, are truly evil. But how certain people are naive, they embrace them and say, oh, come on in. Not realizing the intent is to what? Make mockery of the Muslims and destroy, still destroy them from within. So the people that's upon Baltania come inside the message of the Muslims in order to what? Make mockery of them. Similar to what happened to me in my class last week. When two individuals came from a mess and only them to uh, say their names, and they tried to come in my class, knowing that you didn't come here except to cause fitna. You hate me, and I ask one of them right in front of him, and I put him right on the spot. You talk, you speak, you speak bad about me. You don't like me. I know you don't like me. It's fine. I don't care. But if what are you coming here for? I don't even come to your message. I never prayed there. I don't even know where it's located. So what you tell can take a time out to come here for? Why are you busy yourself with me? I'm not even thinking about you. So why are you coming here? Why? They have an evil intent. It's an intent behind it. It's an ulterior motive behind it. Same thing with these people these days. Same thing. As far as with the Baltimore, same thing. Come inside the Masajid. Their, their so-called intent is just to observe, look, spy, or whatever it is. But the whole affair is something evil. It's not nothing that's sincere or something of what? Of good intent. And Allah knows best. Based upon what appears from their actions. It's because... And their belief in the Baltiniya is that the Masajah of the Muslims is not fit for what? Word worship. Even though they look like they're Muslim. So these are the affairs, like we said, once the affair of Tatwil is opened and what everyone? Once the affair of so-called distorting the tuk, the nusus, the text of the Kitab and Sunnah, once that circle is open, there's no end to it. To the point where, like we said, you can even start now saying that there's another prophet after the message of Allah. And this you'll find that he uses this in the banner of Tatwil. You'll find that Shaykh, Shaykh, uh, Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, he said that you'll even find the affair Tatwil led to this affair of Ahmed Ghulam al-Qadiyani, who was a prophet after the message of Allah, in the name of so-called distorting the verses in the book of Allah. And distorting the meaning of the text which comes in the authentic sunnah, that they open the door to say that there's another prophet after the message of Allah. And as a result of it, the Muslims were led, were led astray and they embraced the call of the hellfire. In the, under the guise of what everyone? Tatwil. Tatwil. Of, of what? Distorting. And that's the meaning of Tatwil here in this context. We know Tatwil has numerous meanings. That's one of them. One of them is distorting the text in the book in the Kitab, in the, in the book of Allah and the sunnah. Tatwil can also mean tafsir. There is praiseworthy meanings of the word tatwil. But what Shaykh Hussain is speaking about here is distortion. 
distortion of the meanings. That's what he's speaking about. Finally, for those in the affairs that those who are suddej, mean those who are naive, he said they don't know. Why are the people naive? He said due to the fact of what came in the statement of Abu Khattab radiallahu an, al Khalifa al Rashi. We mentioned in that other he says in the Matun Tatu, Urwa Islam, Urwa Tan Urwa, Ida Nashala fit Islam, Man Lam Yar fit Jahiliya. He said, for those who are naive, that can be easily influenced because they think that everybody wants good or everyone wants good. Now realizing that you have to be careful. You have to be careful in certain instances because certain people get close to you with an evil intent. He said, for those who do not have the, the, the criteria to distinguish due to the, the statement of Ibn Khattab, which is what? Verily, the bonds of Islam will be what? Diminished. He says, Urwatan Urwa, meaning bit by bit, meaning the person who's raised in Islam, but they do not know the jahiliya, meaning they did not learn the evil so they can avoid it. And this happens to a lot of people these days. They do not learn the evil so they don't know how to what? Avoid it or it's people when they come. So this happens to a lot of people these days and this is the type of uh, speech and the deal that the great Imam, Sheikh Muhammad Imam Jami is bringing. He said, for those who've been raised in Islam and they learn out the evil, meaning they educate themselves on what to avoid. And they were what? And they educated themselves, they know how to protect themselves or they know how to refute or reject certain evils or calls to the hellfire once they hear. But when a person does not know, then you're vulnerable. You're liable to what? Be subjected to it and as a result, you'll follow it. So, the fourth thing, let's continue to read. Shaykh al Islam says, the fourth thing we have to mention, that the human mind, al aql al sarih the untampered with mind, untampered, let's say tampered, untampered with mind, or the, the mind that hasn't been corrupted. That mind agrees with the revelation. He said, this is what the, the salaf were upon of this ummah. Now listen to what the last part, because I want everyone to uh, understand this statement properly that the great Imam mentions here in this context. This, this is what he says. When Caliph al Nusul speaks of tafsiri, may ajizun al aqlu al bashari an darkit tafsir. He said, they, even though they're in the text, now listen. He says, of what? Of detail of what the, the human mind is, unca- is incapable of attaining its details. Listen. From the affairs you'll find that the great. Khalifa al Rashid, the great, the best of this ummah after the Prophet, sallam, who was Abu Bakr al Siddiq, the great Sahaba, that he said in that statement, Al Ajizu an Darkin Idraq Idraq, the incapability of attaining the, the true reality of something is understanding it. What does he mean by that? For example, let's give an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us of ascension, that he ascended above the, the throne. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not inform us that what, how Allah did it, or the true reality of it. So not comprehending how Allah did it is actually comprehending it. Is it clear? Not able, or not, looking of how it is, or prime, or looking, or digging deep to find out how it is, and, and saying how it is, and trying to attain that affair, that is truly what understanding it. So that's what he means by it. Is it clear, everyone? So I said, Al Ajzu an Dalkil Idraq Idraq. Al Aql al Bashari la yukir yudrik. Tafasir ma jad bihi sharia. Qad yahtar. La yuhir. Rakin yahtar. The Yana who lam yutab in the Imi in the Padilla. The Dalika yatarif al Aqil. Be Ajzi nafsihi an Idraq al Hakaik. Al Tijat bihi al Nusus. He said, for verily those texts in which brings those narrations, especially about Allah Tabiru Ta'ala, us not knowing the reality of how Allah Tabiru Ta'ala did these, these affairs or what we know when it comes in the, in the authentic sunnah of, for example, as I just said, ascension, those matters is actually understanding them properly. Meaning of not trying to find out how it is or how they are. Is it clear everyone? طيب. So then he goes on to say, وَإِنَّمَا عَقْلَهُ مُجْمَلًا 
إلى غير ذلك من الوجوه على أن الأساطين من هؤلاء الفحول معترفون بأن العقل لا سبيل له إلى اليقين في عامة المطالب الإلهية الله أكبر He said verily the mind even though it comprehends it generally of those texts especially pertaining to Allah He says and other than that from other instances He says even though the أساطين He said that those from the heads from these people they have convinced or they have now they have now confessed that the human mind there is no way for it to attain surety in the affairs connected with Allah. What is Shaykh al-Islam and who is Shaykh al-Islam speaking about? When he said the heads. We talked about some of them in our previous classes six months ago. He's talking about the heads of those who are the scholars of the people of logic. How they made tawbah, how they made repentance in the last part of their lives telling their followers of what was the ending result of them busying themselves with philosophy and rhetoric, how it drove them crazy. It drove them to madness and confusion until they had to make toba. How it instilled nothing but doubt. And he told their followers that the ultimate result of this is doubt. So why would you study something that the ultimate result of it is confusion and doubt? It doesn't make any sense. And he said, we, we talked about this in the early part of the book, of all the different types of scholars from the people of logic, of who actually convinced or who were convinced and actually admitted to their followers and their, their so-called people who love them, that this is the ultimate result. I advise you, don't busy yourself with it, and that it will lead ultimately in the end to your destruction. And to the point where we even read the du'a from one of them, that if my Lord does not have mercy on me, for way lu li as Joanne jo even said that, if my Lord doesn't have mercy upon me, to now restore back to me my, my faith and my mind not be in a state of confusion, for woe to Joanne, woe to me. So it's saying to what? To let you know that this is what Shaykh is talking about here in this context. This is what he's talking about. He said that the heads of them, they even have admitted that the apple is no way. By that, you can attain surety. Meaning that you will always be in a state of what? Confusion. We want to even add on to that. We want to add on to that, not only the human mind, everyone, brothers and sisters, but also your emotions. Your emotions will lead to your destruction. Your emotions are like storms. The only thing that allows it to be intact is the Kitab and Sunnah. If you do not submit to Kitab and Sunnah, and you do not hold those, those storms, or the, if you want to say like a wild horse that's going crazy, ballistic, what holds it down is those reins. And the reins that keeps it in control is the Kitab and Sunnah. If the Kitab and Sunnah is removed, all chaos breaks out. And this is what we see today from a lot of people, and you see it all on social media. I feel this way, I feel this way. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. How many times have, have we heard this statement? I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. Until you feel it all the way to the hellfire. With Iyad You will definitely feel that. May Allah protect us and protect you. You feel, you feel, you feel all the way to the hellfire. Into the pit of hell. From how many people of honor you have destroyed and how many fitness you've caused to the end of it. Of mass destruction. Because of how you feel. I feel this way, I feel this way, I feel this way. So it's not only just the intellect that the, that the Kitab and Sunnah came to control and to utilize properly, it's also your feelings, your emotions. The Kitab and Sunnah allows you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. He created us with feelings for us to cry, for us to feel times of sadness, for us to feel times of anger, for us to feel times of happiness. This is what Allah has created every human being to have. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to have these affairs as long as they utilize well properly and in a manner that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the boundaries and for them not to exceed. For example, when, when a loved one dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us time for you to, to cry and to feel what? Pain and sorrow when someone close to you dies. If you look at Kitab and Sunnah and study it, Allah allows you to do that. Allah gives you time to grieve. There's a time for it. But then there's a period of time after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
teaches us, it's time to move on. You still have your life to live. You still have to live life. That's why there's a set appointed time where Allah gives us time to what? Grieve. To let you know that Allah revealed the revelation in order to what? Put proper restraints on our emotions and our intellects. So those affairs do not exceed the bounds. So you do not what? Wreak havoc upon society nor cause corruption in it. So you'll be one of those who what? Will be a part of corrupting Allah's land instead of being a reason for its what? Rectification. Is it clear, everyone? Fine. So he goes on to say, So the heads of those, they even mention to say that the mind is no way for it to attain surety in the affairs that's connected with Allah to be the This matter, that's an affair, that's a consensus. المطالب الإلهية the, the deity or the affairs connected with, with the worship of Allah. He said that the, the human mind is not able to fathom that if it was used by itself. Not in the least. He said what well, a person will have to refer back to is the revelation. Why? Because the human mind can end up in a state of loss. And if the human mind was just relied upon in these affairs, it would become lost. A person will say how? Look to the Jews and the Christians. Look to what they do in regards to Allah Taala, in regards to their human minds, to the point where they even say now, God to me is not even a he; it's a she. It's a she. Who's to say God is a he? Let's remove the gender. So you see, with the human mind, if it was relied upon, the confusion and the corruption will come. So you see what Shaykh Islam is saying: if the human mind was utilizing these affairs. Things will become what? Corrupt. قَضَّعَتْ بِالْفِعْمَ وَإِنْ كَانَ هَكَذَا فَالْوَاجِبَ تَلَقِّيْ عِلْمَ ذَلَكْ مِنَ النُّبُوَاتِ عَلَى مَا هُوْ عَلَيْهِ He said, for that affair of pertaining to Allah, one takes his knowledge directly from the, from the affairs connected with what they call nubuwat, meaning what came through the, through the prophecy, meaning of the prophets, of what they were upon and what they conveyed to the people. That's what's correct. And that is the correct information that will what? Put the human mind in its proper perspective and it to be utilized in the proper way. He said, وَمِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَعَثَ مُحَبَّةً بِالْهُدَى وَدِينَ الْحَقِّ He says, what is known for the believers that Allah sent Muhammad وسلم, with guidance, meaning the proper knowledge and the religion of truth, meaning Righteous actions, in order that it will be made superior, dominant over all other religions, and Allah suffices as a witness. He says also what the Messenger of Allah clarified and what He informed them of the affairs of faith, meaning faith with Allah in the day of resurrection and the affairs of the hereafter. For verily, Iman and Allah in the hereafter, the day of resurrection, and the paradise and hell, and the likes of that. He said that what it contains, number one, is yatadhamman al Iman bin Mabda, wal Ma'al. That it contains having faith of how it was originated and where it will end up in the hereafter. And that having faith in khalq and birth, and that the creation was created and that they will be resurrected. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathers between all of those matters in, in one eye. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آبَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ He said from the people, now listen to this, that they say we believe in Allah in the last day, and they are not believers. Notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered between belief in Him, meaning Belief in Him and, and the affairs connected with, with the unseen, which is of the day of resurrection. That you be created and you be resurrected is nothing except wahida, of what you perceive in human beings is just one blow or less.
وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقِ ثُمِّ يُعِيدُهُ He's the one that originated the creation and he will repeat it. Meaning he will resurrect it again. وَقَدْ بَيِّنَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى عَلَى لِسَانِ رَسُولَهِ مَنْ أَبْلِ الْإِيمَانِ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيُمِ الْآخِرِ مَا هَضَ اللَّهُ بِهِ عِبَادَهُ وَكَشَفَ بِهِ مُرَادَهُ He said, indeed, Allah has commanded upon the tongue of his messenger from the, from the obligation of faith in Allah and the day of resurrection, in which Allah has guided by that knowledge, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided by that knowledge, his servants, and he has removed from it what is incorrect, of course, with kashafa bihi muradha. Not only the knowledge that Allah sent down with proper guidance, but also Allah made sure that what was clarified of its meanings and wanting it to be understood in the proper way. So do not think that when Allah sent down the verses that they were not sent with any clarity for one to understand it properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom and knowledge knew, had knowledge and perfect wisdom that when He sent down His revelation that it would have to be understood right. It had to be understood properly. So when Allah revealed it, he, now Employed, or if you want to say, sent his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, to clarify what Allah intended by those verses and what, the, what Allah ta'ala wanted to be understood or in the manner when it was supposed to be understood. That is from the affairs of, that the Ummah or this Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, was preferred with over all other nations. That when we came with these verses, when they lay in that when we read them, they're still intact, whereas we have the proper understanding to revert back to in order to understand them properly. So all the other different satanic calls don't come in order to what? Divert our attention and lead us astray. And from those affairs to the affairs of what? As we mentioned, Tetwil. We'll, we'll stop here inshallah. We'll stop here. We'll continue next week as far as the Any questions about the lesson, anyone? Tafadah. So instead of it being called Masajid, what was the Ma'abid. 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 Places of worship. Places of worship. Oh. That's what the balcony, the balcony used still exists to this day. A lot of them still still exist from the Sufis and even, and even from the Shia. The Shia. Even the Shia have a deviant sex from the balcony. And they were very, very heavy at one point in time in Egypt and they're trying to they're also trying to now spread their dawah very heavy in Egypt right now from the, from the Balkani Shia. They're trying to invade those countries and take them over and bring the, these type of ideologies back to the country. And this is the reason why those countries are what? Those, a lot of the darkness has befallen them on those lands because these type of ideologies become widespread within the lands. As a result of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his punishment down. The Houthis, I don't think they're considered balcony. I will have to find out to look and investigate. But the Ismailiyin and who we just discussed, for example, the Parabita and the likes of them, they're balcony. In balcony. Also, uh, in, in within uh, Syria. Syria is also like a Sufi balcony type of, of, of methodology of what some of the people were upon. It, the balcony is widespread in a lot of Muslim countries. They don't think they don't exist. They're still widespread everywhere. They have their own deviant sex amongst the, amongst the Shia, amongst the Sufis, and they were at one time they used to rule Egypt. At one time they used to rule it. They used to rule Egypt. They were under the Balkany, and I don't know if it's the Ismailis, but it was one of the deviant sects from the Balkany that they used to actually rule Egypt. Yeah. That's the reason why at one time uh, the, the Jami'at al-Azhar the famous university in Egypt which is in Cairo it was under the rule of the Balkani Shia the Shia used to the Shia used to be uh, over it before the Isha'is took it over but they were the ones in control of it at one time before the Isha'ira took it over they used to be in charge of the affairs of the university Jami'at al-Azhar in Cairo Oh yeah. So these are the affairs that brother needs to be on guard against, especially during these days. And like we said, brothers and sisters, these this is the affairs that has angered Allah. And as a result of it, Allah sends his wrath down upon the creation. 
due to these type of satanic calls that the people embrace. And there's so many types. People have to realize the call of the devil is not just in magic and sorcery. It's also in what we're studying here, philosophy and, and, and Greek mythology, of course, that's not without a doubt. And magic and witchcraft and, uh, and also what you call uh, zodiac signs, also logic, philosophy, all those affairs are the cause of the devil. All of them are considered the cause of the devil, the cause of the shaitan. And then we have music. Music is the voice of the devil. The voice of the devil comes in so many forms. It comes in so many forms, and then one has to know what it is so he can be on guard against it to protect him and his family from it. But they come in so many types, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, to guide you, and protect us and protect you. Anything else? We'll stop here, inshallah. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وشهر لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك